So this is a uh, performance laboratory in it which has uh, a set of 12 motion capture cameras installed and a server that allows us to look at live interactions between people uh, in a great deal of detail. It allows us to capture the gestures, hand movements and uh, body position. And the way it does that is that it uses optical sensors, uh, sort of passive sensors, which reflect infrared light that's strobed from the cameras. People put these sensors on, joints like wrist and shoulder, and then we can track the movements in 3D and reconstruct a skeleton of the whole body and then look at the relationship between the movements of different people as they have a conversation. We can take the markers on somebody's head and work out the angle of orientation of the head, so where the head is pointing. That enables us to look at patterns of address in multi-party exchanges, for example, who the speaker is di directly addressing, the primary recipient, who the speaker is not currently looking at, not currently talking to, but is nonetheless part of the conversation, and we can classify them as a secondary recipient on the basis of the speaker's head angle. Then once we've done that, we can look at what the primary and secondary recipients are doing non-verbally, what kind of feedback they're giving to the speaker as they're talking. And this turns out to be interesting and uh, very different for primary and secondary recipients. Why is it important to uh, look at how social interactions work for people with the diagnosis of schizophrenia? We know that um, they are very socially excluded. They're one of the most socially excluded groups in our society. Maximum one in ten work, um, which is much lower than any other group with a disability. Um, uh, they also have fewer people to turn to in a crisis, they have fewer social contacts, fewer friendships, and the quality of those friendships is not as good. Um, and then, uh, conversely, we also know that those people that have better social contacts, better quality social networks, have a much better outcome and they recover much better than those people who don't. We're very interested in looking at patients' interactions and how they communicate with other people outside of the clinical setting. So while we know that you can get a snapshot of how people interact in a medical appointment, that doesn't necessarily um, give you a good idea of how they relate to people outside of the clinic. And it's outside the clinic in terms of their interactions and relationships other, with other people that make the difference in terms of their social outcomes and recovery. So it's very exciting to be able to, to think about understanding how those relationships work. Because we're interested in how patients interact with others outside of clinical context, we um, investigated the nonverbal communication of patients and others within multi-party interaction. We, we were interested in looking at the participation of the patient, both in the role of speaker and primary and secondary recipient, and in how others interact with the patient, so their participation when a patient is present. What we found was that within an interaction, in the first 30 seconds, patients appear to be marginalised um, and participate less actively in the interaction itself. And this is diminished over time and becomes less as the interaction progresses. But it appears that the first 30 seconds are critical in terms of interpersonal processes, so how others experience rapport with that patient. The implication of these findings is that social exclusion that patients experience may be played out in their interactions with others. And in order to identify what specific interaction elements contribute to this, we need to tease these apart in terms of patients' social interactions with others.